Hello everyone, Farhan Ferdi here, and I would like to share a story behind one day brake pads. So I changed these um, two days ago. I rode it for a day and they are gone, completely gone. So I posted that on Instagram, it's like, well, that's what happened. And um, my the internet got back with loads of feedback and enormous amount of suggestions. What can be wrong with the bike? Because the brake pads don't wear out in a day. Do they? Well, I'm riding here in the sand, mud, water, and all that. And it basically creates a sand paste, which grinds the pads uh, quite well. But I found the issue with the bike as well. As people said, there must be something wrong. There kind of is. Uh, but it is something completely different than everyone suggested, which is quite interesting. So. What I want to do is I want to go through a few different pads I have here to show what's the difference because the pads are at fault as well. And uh, then I want to show what's okay with the bike and what is not okay with the bike. So let's do that. I have here three different brake pads. I have the Brenta, which lasted a day. I have the EBC double sintered or double H uh, brake pads, which lasted about seven thousand kilometers and I have the brand new Yamaha OEM brake pads. Now what I want to show is that these brake pads lasted 7,000 kilometers and uh, have been three times here in the sand and in the mud and all that and this is what happened. Now they are basically at the very indicator of the um, OEM ones so that's uh, for the EBC. Now if I look at the Brenta, this is what the Brenta ended up after one single day um, in, in here. And um, why is that? The thing is that if I sort the brake pads according to the hardness, it would be basically like this. These are really soft. You can scrape them with, the, with, with your finger. Um, these are organics as well uh, as, as the Brentas the Yamaha organic pads, middle ground really, and then you have a super hard um, EBC brakes. Now, what's funny is that I have put this old brake pad, because I changed it because it was kind of almost worn out and I thought that it's not gonna survive the rest of the training. So I replaced that with the Brenta. Now, the Brenta got eaten up in a day, so I put back the um, EBC one and this brake pad lasted another day and didn't change much in that day comparing to the Brenta. So even with the issue which I'm going to show you this pad is still I, I will probably be able to finish the whole training on these pads and the Brenta got obliterated in a day. So let's look at the bike. So as I said I got loads of suggestions what can be wrong with the brake system most of it concentrated on the caliper and around. Um, in terms of brake fluid, uh, there is no water in a brake fluid and there is no air. I bled it. Uh, there is no spongy um, action on the brake pedal or anything like that. The brake fluid has about eight months to go um, for the two year service interval. There's not, it's not overfilled. It's nothing like that. I have checked all that. Another thing is the caliper needs to move freely like this. So in, there's a pin in here and there's a one pin behind and the caliper needs to move freely. If it's not moving, if it's stuck, then the brake pads will wear out very quickly. Another thing is to check is whether the piston is moving or leaking or anything like that. Mine is moving freely and I can pump it back and it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So um, on this side, this is all okay. Pads are back on and the caliper moves still and it's free. The wheel spins now very freely because uh, the brake is not engaged. So if I pump it a bit, the caliper is gonna hold and now I can spin the wheel, I can spin the wheel, I can brake, I can spin the wheel, I can brake, and it spins as it's supposed to spin. Now, 
there is an issue that if I spin it and I brake and I release the brake pedal and now the brake pad is actually engaged and it's binding. So if everything is okay, what can cause the rear brake to bind? Well, the brake pedal, you push on it, it brakes and then it returns up and disengages the brake. But when you notice, I push on the brake pedal, it goes a little bit up, but then there's this amount of the movement which is missing to disengage the brake fully. Why that can be, the brake pedal has a bush in here which needs to be uh, greased and cleaned and all that. And then also there is a spring which is responsible to push the brake pedal up. And what I think is happening is that the spring is weak and it's not able to put that up because I did clean and re-loop the bush with, before I came here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disassemble that and check the spring. Today is gonna be full of surprises. So this is the bush which goes inside the brake lever. This is the spring which is responsible for pulling the, the lever up. And um, I thought this is gonna be clean uh, because I cleaned it before I left. But in two weeks it was full of uh, mud and muck and all that. And that prevented, it basically had a lot of resistance. So what I did is I cleaned up everything and I uh, put it back together. Surgery is done, everything works as expected. The brake pedal now, when I press it down, it goes up all the way uh, up to the, po the upward position to disengage the brake. I can spin the wheel, I can brake, and I can spin the wheel. So everything is okay now. Uh, the cause was the bush got stuffed with sand. There are two O-rings and uh, the resistance of the movement was so high that the spring was not able to push that up. So just clean that up and everything is fine. Very easy fix, uh, to be honest. I wouldn't expect that to get um, deteriorate that quickly because I, I cleaned it uh, before I came here. So yeah, some lessons learned, unexpected. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be complicated when uh, it comes to um, faults. So I'm really, really happy and I can finish off another week of training because the brake pads will last 